Say with me, everybody. Golden Show, Golden Debate Show, where everybody on my deck here. Striving to be the best around here, so like, comment, share, and download. We ain't stopping this live thing from, from stopping this. Matter of fact, we're getting fucking stronger, more golden. So like, comment, share, and download. Sound of Chris The golden 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 The golden 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 The golden 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 Show, Golden Debate Show, 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 well, the other little trend, the other yeah, little trend yeah, that kind of yeah. got my attention, uh, even though I knew this, I kind of knew this, but I didn't know the numbers or see it in, in action. They had a, uh, a series of slides and they did a bunch of studies on if you uh, if, say you're a company and you're trying to get your message across, who is the best person within that company that can actually get people to believe you? Oh, Bono? Is it? <laughs> That would be close, but that's actually on the list, but it's not it. It's not Bono. It's not the CEO. It's not the public relations company. There's a whole bunch of things. It's, it's the not. guy on the factory floor with the hard hat. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the employee. Yeah. So the idea is, so we can see this coming down Broadway. That, in fact, I think a lot of this stems from what Adam Curtis did when he did that documentary showing that the news source, the news sources are going to the man on the street. Yeah. Open minds, not empty. Uh, this is an extension of that where you, where you just right, had you just a, go a to thing the blew up. Right, 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 exactly. And you say, what do you think happened? I don't know, but it's bad. <laughs> wow. And this is a news report. So we're doomed here. The, the only people that are going to... Uh, this podcast is one of the few things that's an outlier because it's not falling for any of this crap. And for that very reason, I want to thank you for your courage and say in the morning to you, John C. Dvorak. Well, in the morning to you, Adam Curry. Uh, in the morning to all the ships to see boots on the ground, feet in the air, subs in the water, and all the dames and knights out there. Yeah. So, so this is why you want. Oh, to that go, sucks. You want to go work for the government? This is this is the whole. Yeah, that thing. totally stinks. He should be for everyone. No, this is only for government workers. The federal minimum wage provisions. And now, maybe this is only for government workers. It is only for government workers. That's what I'm telling you. Ten dollars and ten cents an hour for federal. No, I saw, but maybe the seven twenty five ah. is only for government workers. Oh, that's possible. Yeah, that has to be the case. That's the only way that would make sense. What he's up to. Visit to employers. I have to look or read this thing over. Huh? Okay. Well, screw him. Yeah, I'm. I'm not thinking this is a very. Um, I have my problems. It's not with, very aggressive for a big talker. No, I. I, I have my issues with the the, oh, the idea of a minimum wage. I, I think it actually hurts. You know, I'm not an economist, and people can can and will argue. And please, just don't send me email about this. I don't need to hear your. You know, I get enough grief from John on the show. I don't need to hear about, you know, that you know it better. Unless you're Paul Krugman, and I'll argue with you. If you have a Nobel Prize in economics. I think I like the minimum wage. I don't think it's a big deal. So Everybody makes a big a stink like about it. Uh, well, mostly the Republicans. Uh, debate shows how am I going to pay my illegal alien Mexican person to, to, to clean my yard? For us, you know, um, no, that's... You has, no, you use agree. a contractor and they'll screw the guy over. I think everybody should be paid <laughs> a lot more unless you want to do that. I'd like billions and they're making interest alone on the money they got in the bank. 
Well, this pagan ritual didn't sit too well with the Catholic Church, so they tried to Christianize it by linking the practice to the legend of St. Valentine, a man beheaded by the Roman Empire Emperor Claudius II for performing secret marriage ceremonies. Gives a whole new meaning to the term head over heels, am I right? <laughs> but while the kinky and no, the origins of this holiday have largely been forgotten, it seems like the weird Indiana. use of animals to promote fertility is still alive and well. This Valentine's Day, size really does matter. You're listening so to you the Golden Show. If you big with your Valentine, go big with the big hunk of love bear from Vermont Teddy Bear. He's four and a half feet tall. He's soft. And let's face it, no girl can resist a teddy bear that's this adorable. <laughs> yes, that's an actual product that I'm sure tens of thousands of people have already purchased. Yeah, every study that's ever been done shows that You mean, wait, people are actually still killing people right people now? People apparently keep killing people despite the death penalty. Yes. There's no difference in states that have the death penalty, don't have the death penalty, which makes sense, because I think, I'm not, I, not that I've experienced it, but I think when you're murdering someone, you're not thinking, well, let's see, 10 years down the road, <laughs> I wonder if I'm going to the Okay, hey, even if it's more expensive to kill these people, which, you know, who knows if you're if you're lying on that one? Even if it <laughs> even if it really isn't a deterrent, yeah. even you know you're saying that there's still murders happening. I haven't seen any evidence to back that up. But even if what you're saying is true, what if it were your family? What I mean, seriously, because yeah, that is no. the argument. What, what if it were your family? Who were horribly killed? And the question is, do you mean my family killed by a murder? Earlymorningmob.com. Oh, innocent on death row. Snap. See, Turning that's tables, that's the you? question. What if it were your family that's innocent on death row? But then, then, then we get down to the best reason, right? Why do you imply this that is... these people are innocent on death row? Well, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> okay. I want to I want to cover one other reason yeah, though yeah, yeah. that uh, that people always give. They always say. When you get through all the steps, they always get to the last one where they go, well, it feels good. Listen, it feels right to see Jeffrey Dahmer or Unabomber or some, oh, some horrible person. It feels good to see them die. Well, here's the thing. Wouldn't it feel good to see, like, the heads of Goldman Sachs in a UFC fighting match with Brock Lesnar beaten with sacks of their own money? Yeah, it feels pretty good. And would it feel good to see the real housewives of Beverly Hills have drywall shoved in their mouths and spackled shut? Yeah, it feels pretty good. And would it feel good to see the heads of Exxon and Chevron dropped in oil and then covered in breadcrumbs and then sent into a, an enclosure with exotic birds and pecked. Yeah, it feel pretty good, right? Why don't we do those things? Because they're morally wrong. So if we find all those Are things you? morally unacceptable, oh. why not erase like this fucking death penalty? You know, we haven't gotten into the racist thing yet. Yeah, I really do want to see the heads of Goldman Sachs. Yeah, yeah, I, I like know, the way she breaks things down in a non-big media way. Right? So let's get into this next clip on the Golden Debate Show or the one about that. evil in its worst state, an intolerable one. For when we suffer or are from exposed the to the, the same voice, it breaks down things pretty peacefully, and I like the way he breaks it down. So let's get it in. Go to the debate show. Our, our calamity is reflecting that we furnish the means by which we suffer. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I will be your host. For You're listening to The Golden Actually, Show. Let me change that. It's not really... A pleasure to be here at all, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, because if the world was a good world and a decent world and an honest world and it was run by people of integrity, then there would be no need for me to be here. And though it is a pleasure to talk to you and to be able to bring information to you and to have a platform with which to do so, the situation that creates the need for me to be here is certainly one that is far from pleasurable. It just depends on your perspective. And isn't that just the way with everything? And isn't that just the way in the state that it's in, folks? Have you ever wondered why so many people look at the world today and see the problems that we face and create organizations, and there are so many of these organizations now, and work for positive change, and how everybody that you meet in society knows the place is a mess. EarlyMorningMob.com wants, wants to make a difference and wants the world to go in a different direction, and yet no matter how many people want this to occur, Fap and how many is what organizations are created, how many movements Hashtag are created, Brown. how many funds are created, how much money is donated, who is voted in, who is voted out, what political parties are created, and how many steps are taken, that nothing ever 
changes and the world just continues to go along in the same direction that it's always been going. And it's a direction which is leading towards the destruction of environment and the control of the people. And, and that is the most important thing, the control of the people. And you might think I'm overstepping the mark there and say, well, what about the environment? Well, if you can control the people, then that's how you destroy the environment or save the environment. Because all of the damage that's being done on the planet is being done by people. And so the people are the most valuable resource and the most valuable thing that you need to control. And it's not just controlling them in a physical sense, but you need to control the perception of the people, what their perspective is, the ideas that they have and the way they think about reality. And what happens in reality, folks? How has it got to the point where we have become so disconnected to the earth? How has it got to the point where we are not able to use the abundance of the planet around us and work and live in harmony with the planet the way we should? And what we find very often is that we restrict ourselves from doing this by our own actions because everything we do is programmed and every action so we take So as we let the Maxwell Egan clip play, I'm going to play a little cartoon clip from back in the day. Yeah. You're it's listening to the Golden the Show. Movie, Golden Debate Show. Ah, fuck it. Snow it. Snow it again. Never no, no Easter. <laughs> her either, Logan. But if this is what Storm wants, who are we to stand in her way? We are her friends. That's who. Wolverine is correct. Storm's acceptance of this marriage and proposal now, seems unnaturally means. sudden. And she's planning to stay with him on this mud ball forever. Storm's not acting like herself. Perhaps that is because for the first time in my life, I am truly happy. I understand your concern, Cyclops. As our leader, you worry for my safety, yet you are generous enough to want for me only what is good. Hank, you have analyzed my decision and found my logic wanting. My dear friend, my decision comes not from my mind, but from my heart. And Logan, you more than anyone know the pain that comes when one is not at peace. I have been dedicated to the X-Men since I was a teenager, <laughs> never allowing myself a life beyond my work. I that ain't good. Logan! Carol Ventura, and as you know, this is Famous our happy from Valentine's Day edition on of Buzzsaw. Sadly, it's not all hearts and flowers in the yeah. news, oh. but we'll do our best no to here. look as okay. great no as possible. No listening to the well, Golden Show. The only good shit about that is to get all the candy cheap. Loved one. Coming up, we're going to be talking about the Bin Laden death photo controversy. James Clapper is at it again on Capitol Hill. And there's some really toxic lakes going on in my home state, the great state of Minnesota. And to bring us all of this fantastic news is my awesome compadre, Julie McCoy, fresh from the love boat. Still might not be safe to drink. Right. I mean, that's insane. And the government hasn't been testing home, private homes, residences, or small businesses. Just only been testing. Hey. Hey. 
Trailers. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, so you don't actually know. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. The only people around doing it. Uh, Evan Hansen, a principal at Downstream Strategies, an environmental consulting company that was doing some of the tests, said, quote, it's really important for people to know the water quality at their home. The testing that's been done at fire hydrants is not necessarily representative of what's going on in people's homes, end quote. Wow. And, of course, it's... This is the guy who's Early morning mob so dot com. Media, but dot quite com. frankly, Important test, people right? shouldn't have to be unsafe in their own homes with their water when because they can't afford to have a test. Yeah, no, that's that's so gross. So gross. I mean you have senators saying I wouldn't drink that water if you paid me. You know, and I mean, what's worse still is the fact that, you know, you brought up the Patriot coal spill. Right, so here's you this know. other... Which... So now you got like 100,000 gallons of this <laughs> sludge getting dumped into, you know, six yep. miles of a, of a beautiful scenic creek. Um, that just so you know what this stuff is, it, you know, it basically it's the waste fluid uh, produced by washing the coal with water here. and chemicals prior to shipping coal to market. Now, it's cold, to dirty bathwater. This basically is what now is spilled, spilled into, into this stream. Into creek. Um, Well, almost a year later, that it could find no McRaven emails. Not one email from our Special Operations Command Admiral didn't have one email about bin Laden. Period. The guy in charge of killing them and, co and covering it up had no emails that even pertained to bin Laden. But sadly, they did, which means that yeah. they lied. Which That's they the always seem to do. You can't say there was nothing. We know there's something. And, now, and, well, and I love, too, is that now their excuse for, like, saying, well, we didn't have any of those emails, and, like, how could we produce them is because it was a CIA operation. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're kind of, like, bouncing it it around the responsibilities operation. now, saying, like, well, it wasn't on us. Like, the CIA was handling it. No, so you just asked the wrong question. You know. Right, so what you did also is... is, is Let's get into this next clip from the Joe Rogan experience. The Joe Rogan experience. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like this. Like right I said, I didn't think I was going to like the Joe Rogan experience. You're listening, you're listening to the Golden the Show. This is the Golden Debate Show. Check out the Golden Show. I think I can say his name he actually talks about it, and he's a really good teacher. He was a medic in Vietnam for two tours. He's seen everything, you know. And he was like one of the first people that somebody said to him in class, you know, we take class from 7 to 12. I'll say it because I love him. His name is Richard Lawson. He's a really special guy. And and uh, he's got a great acting class. And he said, uh, somebody said, I never seen you yawn. And he goes, yeah, because I don't put my attention on myself. I put my attention out there. I'm not thinking about being tired. I don't focus on the fatigue. And they were like, what do you mean? He goes, I learned in Vietnam watching when a Viet Cong, when an American would get shot a lot of times. Just get shot, you the get shot, you get shot. A lot of times, you get shot. There's also the notion that you get shot and your heart starts beating really fast because you're terrified because you might die. I mean, you, you go into that notion. The Viet Cong, they get shot in these horrific injuries and you could still interrogate them because they'd be putting their attention out there. They would immediately start focusing and their whole way of thinking anyway was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're listening to the Golden so Debate Show and the reason, Golden Show. It's so early, early in the morning, morning you better dot lay com, dot com. On, You know, something in front of them. So they weren't focusing on the wound. And he said he used to see that when he was a medic taking care of people and he saw such a fundamental a striking difference in the mindset between the Viet Cong and an American GI and he was so impressed with their ability to focus on anything but themselves they were not part of this equation they were a very small part of the equation that he used it in his own life you know he, he would use this idea if he was tired or you know feeling sick that he would just literally put his mind over there off himself, take mm -hmm. himself out of the, and actually watch himself move through. Don't look over here. Done. I bet you probably get a lot more. Energy and now back to real things. Festering on the idea that you're tired. Of which, course. Which is, I always found that the things that I detest the most in other people are the things I'm terrified of seeing in myself. Mm -hmm. And a person who doesn't know how to like push through shit and get things done and just come on, come on, get up, just yeah. do it, get it yeah. done, get it done. Because I'm done. terrified of being that guy. Yeah. I'm terrified of not getting shit done. Yeah. You know, and it, it forces me to find it to be gross things in other people. You go. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like one of the things that scares me about um, them taking a wrestling out of the Olympics. Ah, oh, it's the worst. Yeah, it's crazy. The oldest sport in the Olympics. It's, it's And the fact that it's not even in every high school. I think there's some real lessons to be learned that a lot of people are never going to learn. And those lessons are how to get through difficult shit, mm -hmm. how to get through physical difficult shit. Mm -hmm. And doing things physical, which a lot of people are avoiding, you get a, a more balanced no, in mind. And that's a fucking important aspect of being a human being. And a lot of people are skipping that step. 
A lot I of people agree. are skipping that step. I agree. It can it can fuck you in the long run. You're listening to the Golden Show. Extra push towards saying something stupid. It can give you the extra bad energy to take a well, left turn. Well, you know, look to get good at anything. You know, let's take wrestling or jujitsu as an example. If you're you, if you want to get good, you better work at what you're bad at. You better work mm-hmm. at the things you're bad at. You can't go in there and tap people out with the stuff that you constantly know because the guys that are working on the stuff they're not good at are going to surpass you. You just learn that the hard way if, you, if you're not careful. And I think everything is that way. You know, you better, you better work at what you are the, and you gain a lot of it. A lot of the times they'll tell you, you know, hey, you bad at music, bad at a musical instrument. Learn how to do something. What I like about the music is I got to learn how to do it. It's really difficult to do. I gain a lot from just the practice and the stretch of trying to learn how to be uh, have all four limbs doing something independent. That's that's yeah. really interesting to me. It actually changes my whole mindset. I actually approach things very differently for the rest of my day. It's really weird. I can't explain how or define how, but it does make a difference. Well, I think when you take on new activities, your mind, when it starts concentrating on earlymorningmob.com dot com or a new game you're trying to master or whatever the fuck it is. When your mind gets really enthusiastic about things and starts trying to figure things out mm-hmm. and working towards and, and achieving like little goals, you get invigorated. Yeah. It's this feeling of invigoration whenever you pursue anything that you find to be fun, anything that you find to be like, stimulating. Come at, cheer, but the down, real oh. thing is like everybody's on, idea please. of what's stimulating is different. Let's get the word right? of the show out. It just is. Oh, yeah, I like that big media the, show. The, the no, real yeah, problem is like that down poor is what kid, it is. his fucking dad keeps pushing him into football and he really wants to suck cock and dance. Yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> Let him well, dance. He'd probably be the best dancing cocksucker of it's all like time. It's like the movie Billy Elliot. Maybe Remember no, Billy Elliot? It's like Botley. You do Botley. I didn't see the movie Billy oh, Elliot. Yeah. I'm a man. He's a great I'm an actual man. That's why they need Baby that's Grinder, though. Or you got kids for Kid Grinder. No, he comes from a coal what, mining family. I don't even family. know what Billy Elliot is. Oh, he comes from a coal mining family, and the guy's like this hard ass coal miner in the north of England, like Manchester. Who's in this movie? It's about just an English movie from Manchester, and the kid wants to be is a ballet dancer. Is this an independent movie? Uh, no, it's really popular there, but he wants to be a ballet dancer. He's an amazing ballet dancer. He's an incredible dancer. And his father's like, ballet, ballet. Like he can't believe it. He's so angry. He's like, ballet. My son's going to do ballet. Not on my, you know, and it's just a disaster for him. But that's what he is. He's a fucking ballet dancer. That's yeah. a great movie. You got to find out what your groove, what your groove is. Yeah, What's you your groove? Is it playing the drums? It goes back to the truth. Yeah. What is your truth? If you try to, if you try to avoid it, you're gonna get yourself, you're gonna be on antidepressants. You're gonna have to mask that 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 truth. Just do what you're supposed to. It do. is amazing that there's no one that's ever come out with a really effective guidebook on how. You're listening to the Golden Show. A successful direction, like no one can ever tell you how to be successful. Yeah. I mean. The, I, and what is successful to you is not successful to someone else, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But to teach you how to manage the whole big package, it's like the, the, the whole idea of managing the thoughts in your mind is just missing from school. <laughs> this, this, I have to just tell you, I'm laughing because when, when people are self-conscious, like in my class, this guy, Richard Lawson, this acting teacher, there, somebody was like, whenever, I, like this guy, this guy was like embarrassed that he'd done something. It's like, I'm fine, I'm just embarrassed by it. I'm, just I'm embarrassed. Hey, I fucked the kid. <laughs> and everybody went, what? And he goes, yeah. I fucked the pig. I'm writing about it right now. You don't think that's embarrassing? I'll tell you everything about myself. I fucked the pig when I was a kid. How about that? And everybody just stopped. And they were like, well, you know what? If you're going to admit that, I can, I can admit fucking anything. And it, it just liberates you when, like, somebody who's a leader in a group goes, hey, guys, 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 in case you guys, st- can everybody stop acting like a fucking Puritan? Because we're all pretty fucked Early up. Earlymorningmob.com. So I don't know if there was a point to that. Which is kind of piggybacking on what you're trying to say, which is essentially, you know, just just Next whatever your fucking truth is, just be honest with yourself, and maybe with a couple we'll of your friends, down, and just fucking very uh, follow that. Monument that was built back in, in the day. So let's break it down. Go to the beach. Go to the show. We're going to have that coffee. You know the routine. We almost stop out of here. Stone in the roots of a tree he was clearing on his farm near the Douglas County town of Kensington, Minnesota. The 200-pound stone was chiseled with a message in runes an old Scandinavian alphabet from the Viking era. Don't look over here. I'm Debbie Miller, reference specialist in the and Minnesota now, Historical Society Library. Person. Once translated, the runes told a strange story of a transatlantic journey taken in the year 1362 by eight Swedes and 22 Norwegians 
ending, as ah, one translation you know. suggests, with a third of the party, quote, red with blood and dead, end quote. Supposedly, the survivors then carved the stone before leaving the area. Ever since Wouldn't the be stone's existence became like known, kind of it has been the subject of fierce debate about its origins and authenticity, arguments that continue to this day. Runologists, scholars who study runes and how they evolved over time, and others interested in the stone's possible claim on the discovery of America by Scandinavians before Columbus, went back and forth with their theories. No, Dean. I'm Henrik Williams. I'm a professor at the University of Uppsala in Sweden. Rune stones are stones with runes on them. You're listening so to the runes? Golden well, Show. Runes are just ordinary letters, the ones that were used by Germanic people, that is, English, German, Scandinavians, in olden times. Most of the rune stones we have are from the Viking Age, and that would be a thousand years ago. And they're memorials for dead people. But then there were runes in the Middle Ages, which would be, well, 13, 1400s ah, too. And they would be usually gravestones and, and baptismal funds and church bells and so forth. So runes are just letters used when people didn't know how to use the regular letters that we have now, that we got from Latin. So these letters, the runes, they're used... Uh, the 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 but mainly in Scandinavia and Sweden would be the heartland, I would say, of runic writing. And uh, these letters, in contrary to what most people believe, are not at all magical intrinsically. They're just letters. And perhaps that sounds boring, but actually the truth is always more exciting. And to read what they actually say in these wonderful stories that you hear is much more exciting, at least in my view, than what it would be... You know, Earlymorningmob.com. So you dot have com. Um, about 7,000 runic inscriptions altogether in Northwestern Europe, and uh, about half of those are found in Sweden, and most of those are rune stones from the Viking Age. Some runes were in use in the 14th century that were not still being used uh, in the 19th century, and vice versa. Take. Some students of the stone have thought the message was a cryptogram, a code for a different message than the translation given here seems to say. One of the earliest and best known proponents of the 14th century origin of the runes on this stone was Hjalmar Holland, a Norwegian immigrant who lived in Wisconsin and wrote books about the history of Norwegians in America. Several years after the stone's discovery in 1898, when controversy about it had died down somewhat, Holland's interest breathed new life into the debate. The stone was scrutinized by scholars who argued the finer points of runic analysis, as well as 14th and 19th century history. The intense debate went on for decades, and over the years the stone was exhibited at the Minnesota Historical Society, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, the New York World's Fair, and even in Scandinavia, the motherland of rune stones. Since 1959, the home of the Kensington Runestone has been in a small museum in Alexandria, Minnesota, founded by the local Chamber of Commerce. Like Much of I the like documentary you know, record like relating to its controversial okay. history is found in the Minnesota Historical Society collections. Now to see the original to Kensington Runestone, visit the museum. Because of the obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, and because of the crisis which is even now developing, this radio station will remain on the air day and night. This station and hundreds of other radio and TV stations throughout this part of the country are pooling their resources through an emergency network hookup to keep you informed of all developments. The ghost and the darkness have come. Listening to the Golden Show. All thoughts and opinions are solely that of the host, guests, and sources, and is only to keep free thought alive. Golden Show. Early morning mob.com. Yeah, you're talking about 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 tal